honor to have you here and welcome back to present a um, very useful kind of presentation. Because um, not only do reliable leaders encourage people to follow them, 
but relies on followers one day to come leaders. A reliable employee in a, in a job is the kind of employee that a boss is looking for, but also a reliable boss is someone that a worker enjoys working for. So you have some notes there, I'm not sure if the PowerPoint will work, but you've got some notes there to follow. So we'll go through some of the qualities of a good leader and a good follower. Okay, let's go to the first slide. Reliable implementation. Reliable implementation means will you do what you say you will do? For people to trust you as a leader, or your boss to trust you as a worker, they need to know that when you say you're going to do something, you actually do it. And the problem is for most of us that we're very polite people and we like to make people happy. But we need to learn as leaders and as followers to learn how to say no. Because we're very good at saying, yes, I'll help you with that, yes, I'll do that, yes, I'll complete that task. And when we've said yes to everybody, we can't finish any of them properly. A good leader is someone who is very careful what they say they will do. Because every time we say we will do something and we don't do it, we lose the trust of those that we're speaking to. But you know, for somebody you that you broke and you can you can make them know that you need to follow some now the bonk, I don't feel that you can actually buy the win. But I be you lay me put a kid, I got you lay so stop you. This is the same when you get a job or when you are a volunteer in an organization. Your leaders and your bosses are looking for people who who will say yes to things and then get the job done. Second part of reliable implementation is will you do the job well? Not just will you say yes to it, but will you do it well once you've agreed? As a leader of volunteers, there's nothing worse than people who say, yes, I'll do that thing for you, Brad, and then they give a half effort, or they don't do the job, or they try a little bit and then forget that they agree. Hey, do you know, uh, you know, the third part is will you do it on time? A great leader does what they say they'll do and they do it by the time they said they will do it. Hey, bây giờ cái vừa thà rưu chi mê đặc đoàn với chúng ta bây giờ chúng ta ờ, sau này giờ là thua ấy bằng 
And the last thing is, will you follow it through to completion? So often as a, as a leader, I've had people say, yes, I will do that, but when it gets too hard or when they don't know what they're doing, they give up. A great leader gets things done to the end of the task. And what a leader or a boss or an employer is looking for in their people is someone who they can trust that when they give you a task, they know it's going to happen well. And this seems like a very simple concept that I've just taught you, but um, so often in uh, our society it's lacking, and it's why people don't get promoted once they have jobs. It's why they don't get jobs in the first place because they can't be trusted to be reliable. Right. Next one. Reliable communication. Responsiveness. Now let me ask you a question. When do you think communication has happened? <coughs> Someone give me an answer. When has communication taken place? When you talk Yeah, when you talk to people. But how do I know that I've communicated something to you? A response. A response. Excellent. Yeah, what were we going to say? Conversations. Conversations, definitely. And com communication takes place not just when I've said something to you, but especially as a leader or as an employer, I feel like communication has happened when you've said, yes, I've heard you, and yes, I've understood what you're saying. Uh, 
There is no reason to be an unresponsive leader or an unresponsive follower or employee. We'll move on to uh, the, the second to last one. Not in, no, sorry, go back. Not impulsive, but considered. Do you know? Do you know? What that means is um, when you speak to somebody, you know that they have thought about their response and haven't just responded out of emotion or anger or frustration. So a good leader responds thoughtfully, not out of frustration or anger. Right. And I'll explain the, the last one. People know what they are going to get. With a good leader, in good leadership, you know that every time you talk to someone, you know that you are going to get a certain kind of response. What I mean by that is, one day my volunteer comes into my office and speaks to me and I'm nice and friendly, and then the next day she comes in and talks to me about the same topic and I yell at her with anger, suddenly I've broken trust and there is fear in our relationship. She doesn't know how to relate to me anymore. So a good leader makes people feel like they always know what they're going to get when they approach you. <laughs> A good leader makes people feel safe to communicate, like you're not going to blow up out of the blue unexpectedly. Because they know that your response is reliable, they feel safe to bring up any topic with you. So reliable character. Reliable character means you're a reliable person, you are, your characteristics and your personality are reliable and consistent. Good leadership is more about who you are as a person than the title next to your name. People will naturally follow a good leader because of their character, not because someone has told them you must follow this person. And so a person with reliable character is in control of their own attitude. This means that no matter how bad a day we might have had, the emotion of having a bad day or a bad week or a bad month is real, 
but as good leaders we can control what that looks like on the outside. We all know when we've been at work or school or um, with our community, when somebody shows up in a bad attitude and they let everybody know about it. The truth is that no matter how hard our week, month or year has been, all of us are capable of smiling at someone and saying hello. And a good leader is in control of their attitude in that way. I want to talk about kitchen versus restaurant, which is a way of explaining appropriate communication. I think so much key at the whole people who have been in the grand buy, you can't go buy, I don't know the whole day time before it's wrong. If you've ever seen a cooking show on TV with, in a restaurant, you see that what happens in the kitchen in the back room is a very different kind of communication than when the waiters bring the food out to the tables. This is the kitchen? So uh, if you see in a restaurant the way that the people talk to each other in the kitchen while they're cooking, yep. it's very different to the way oh, yes. the waiters understand it. And they've got trouble not to believe on be people will be in the back of the kitchen when Gordon Ramsay or one of these guys is teaching people how to cook there is yelling and abuse and they are saying get the job done right but then as soon as the food leaves the kitchen and goes out where the customers are the waiters are perfectly behaved and talk nicely and politely and everything's well presented And a good leader knows the difference between these types of types of conversations in their workplace or community group. Yeah. Sometimes the president of a community might need to have a hard conversation with the treasurer of the community. Sometimes in a community, the president might need to have a kitchen or a hard conversation with, say, the treasurer of the community. But a good leader understands that this conversation stays in the kitchen and doesn't go out into the restaurant, which is the rest of the community. Sometimes 
thân tâm ba kia được coi như mạch mũi thì cứ là dùng giấy để con chụp đầu kia chụp đầu như thế thì để chụp non để để chụp kia còn ra được cái gì tay trái C chẳng nam mấy cái thằng người gặp tiếp thêm chụp mũi để sờ đầu để coi chân này đầu kia là dùng hung sáp sờ nhưng anh giấy chụp kia mạch ba nó còn ra được cái gì bị chụp nhiều tiếp sân đầu như thế này còn lại dài lo What happens in the kitchen is very important because it produces a great result in the restaurant. But if we start to mix the two, then suddenly we have a restaurant nobody wants to be in. So a good leader understands when to have a kitchen conversation and what kind of conversations they should have when they're in the restaurant. That makes sense. And working this out builds trust in your organization or community. People know that if they share something hard with you, not everybody in the community will know that thing tomorrow. <coughs> We'll go to operates out of calling on emotion, the fifth one. Sorry, yeah, yeah. Sorry. What that means is that instead of letting our, a good leader doesn't let their emotions dictate their direction. They know where they're going, they know what they're about, and they keep heading that way no matter how they feel. And if I'm telling you, I'm being mentioned, 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 Let's go to the next one. Reliable receptivity. I've got lots of big words, I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> but I've been <laughs> sorry. Yes. Reliable receptivity means um, that you're willing to receive criticism and willing to receive instruction reliably. Sure. Uh, Always willing to learn. Sure. Yeah. Sometimes a leader thinks that they have to know everything and if they act like they don't know something then they're a bad leader but this isn't true. A good leader is always looking for opportunities to learn. They don't want to settle in any place, they want to continually improve themselves. And part of this is the, the bottom line, overcoming defensiveness with security. What I mean by that is sometimes when you tell a person they've done something wrong or something hasn't worked, they react and get defensive. Oh, they make up a million excuses. It happened that way because of this or that, and they get really defensive. Yeah. And they got Yeah. So, somebody who is insecure, who doesn't know who they are as a leader, when they are criticised or things go wrong, they get very defensive and make up excuses. Sure. Yeah, but a great leader 
is secure in who they are, and so they see criticism or mistakes as an opportunity to learn and improve.
you can only give people something that, like as a leader, I can only take people somewhere that I've already been. If that makes sense. I think like. And so I need to keep learning and growing if I want people to keep following me. The level of my growth or education or ability is the, the ceiling of my leadership. So if I want the ceiling of my leadership to keep going up, then I need to keep educating myself and growing as a person. So, yeah. Yeah, I've got a question here going to um, uh, becoming a leader. Would the, would, uh, the family contribution from a young age has a lot to do with the leadership in the future as well. For example, um, my parents have uh, you know, set guidelines for their children and um, having to uh, learn how to respect their um, Yeah, and so on. All those contributions. Would that uh, it is an important uh, contribution in, in a future um, life. Yeah. Definitely. I, I think in two areas. I think the first area is real leadership comes out of the character of a person, not the position or the title, like I said before. And so that's, that is definitely grown in the home and in the, in the upbringing and in, in, in the childhood. Um, and the second area that I think is really important is that kids need somebody that believes in them and says you can be a great person and you can achieve great things. Um, when I was in, I was in Cambodia, can I try to that first and then I'll tell a story? When I was in uh, Cambodia just in January, I was in a small village that just had 11 families living in the village and uh, there was a boy about 12 years old and he was a, a very naughty boy but I could see that he had the ability to be a leader because the other kids followed him in his naughtiness <laughs> and uh, so I said to um, one, of the, one of the leaders of the community, I said please tell that young boy that I believe in him and that I think he can be a great leader one day of his community. And this, this leader in the community said, no, I'm not going to tell him that. You don't know how naughty he is. And I said, I want you to tell him that I believe in him and that he can, that he can do something with his life. And he said, he just flat out refused. He said, no, I'm not going to tell him that. Um, you've only met him one day. I know he's a bad kid. I'm not going to tell him. And, you know, that's the kind of thing that destroys leadership in, in kids. Yeah. That kids need somebody that says, I believe in you. You can do something great with your life. You can achieve your dreams, all of that kind of stuff. I don't like to comment about your community uh, without 
knowing that myself, but I think um, I think for me it's about uh, encouraging the older generation to see the youth as the future. All their all their dreams for what their community will look like one day will never come to pass unless the next generation is inspired and, and developed and, and equipped. And so it's using. I guess the way to motivate anybody to change is to use what's in their heart, the person who is, at the moment they're negative about the, the children, but they've got a dream in their heart about what they want their community to look like. It's about harnessing that dream to enable them to change. So it's not trying to impose your dream on the older generation, but actually harnessing the dream in the older generation to say, um, the way that you're doing things at the moment isn't going to achieve your dream. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. We, often say, we often say to them, no, don't do it that way because I think it should be like this. And that, they, they don't listen to that because they've got a dream for their community. And so it's about saying, it's about harnessing that dream that they have, but, but helping them to understand that the method needs to change. I guess in using the church as an example, for, for centuries the church has done, done things a certain way and, and now nobody goes to church anymore. What we are saying now as the younger generation in my community is the message stays the same, but the methods have to change or we're going to lose yeah. future generations. It's the same in our generation. Yeah. The, the theory and the facts are still there. Yeah. It's just the method of how to get the kids involved are very limited. It's just like today, I mean, we've got lots of communities in our community, but because we haven't got enough um, uh, knowledge and skills to attract those kids to come and attend this yeah. culture, which is a bit disappointing. But um, I do appreciate all the materials are. But you just need some more, um, I don't know, maybe more lessons or something like that, just to encourage young kids to come out of it. Because they actually lost the trust from the elderly already. So it's harder to build on top of those to get the game trust back. Mm -hmm. But the children will trust you, will trust you guys. So well, it's, it's also about you guys getting the, those skills. We, we get the middle. Thank you. 
So I just want to say thank you for having me with you today. Um, my, my church community is really committed to um, people of Cambodia and we do a lot of uh, financially and practically. We visit every year and, and do a lot of things financially. But I also just wanted to say that we're really committed to, to you guys that live here as well in Adelaide. And if there's anything at all we can do to help you and your community, uh, the Khmer Krom community, we're really committed to helping you in any way and just being your friends as well and getting to know you. So that offer's always there and always looking.